Oh, welcome on in everybody to Heroes of the Storm. It's going to load here in just a second. I swear to God, it's actually going to load. There we go. On the left hand side, we have the members of Baby Makers. We're going to have Marbuckle on the Diva. Uh, uh, Freckle Bob, I believe, is going to be on that Stukov. Deadwish will be on the. Alarak, uh, Decibels, I think that's how you, that looks like it's how you'd say that. Decibels, maybe, is going to be on the uh, Anubrak, and Paper Tanks will be on the Greymane. For the side of Wild Heart Omega, we have Valimar on the Ragnaros, Barambala on the Cassia, looking like a Lupus on the Joanna, Frosty Wind playing the Brightwing, and Apparition on the Chromie. It's Romanian. Ah, ah, aha. I see. Hey, Day. Good to see you. Good. Let me know what your uh, what your wild heart adventure is. I'm curious myself, actually. Curious what that wild adventure is going to be. A lot of damage being dumped into Valimar. Marbuckle going to be losing their mech as the pilot form is trying to work their way out of the body blocking. Will be first blood over to the side of Wild Heart Omega. Ragnaros going to split off into the top lane and is going to be going into the Sulfurist. Excuse me, the Empower Sulfurist at level one, building up those 25 stacks by last hitting minions with the empowered Sulfurs. You're actually gonna see that right there as four stacks will be picked up. Alarak will be the one in top lane who did go into the extended lightning at level one. So if you're able to hit three enemy heroes, I believe that's in between. So you actually have to hit all three heroes in the center. You can't target one hero and then hit two, obviously. That doesn't count. You gotta hit three. So typically you'll see Alarak actually target minions so they get that straight line through the enemy team. We'll have to see if Alarak can actually get that finished out. If you finish out that level one completely that last quest that third one you get the 10 percent back that's the big thing there's some scaling value within the first and second reward but the big thing in the end is hitting three heroes so you get that 10 percent back and you also have the other rewards on top of that but we'll see if that happens for the Alarak players, we will continue just to go ahead and check out rotations, as well as we're going to check out that solo lane periodically. Seems like Diva's doing a little bit of double soaking while the members of Baby Makers will sit in bottom lane. Good double rotations out from the side of Wild Heart, and actually Ragnar's going to meet them in this mid lane to clear things out faster. Arcane Punisher will be first in the mid lane, and it is going to be announced here in roughly 40-some seconds. Bottom lane has a camp to be grabbed by the side of... Baby Makers and Wild Hunter Omega will be able to clear that out in their next rotation back to bottom lane. Babarino. <laughs> I should probably uh, have a spot on Baby Makers, all things considered. Ooh, Harkin, what you mean? I thought it was a lewd thing, but I think it's actually a wholesome thing now that, now that I think about it for a hot second. My brain instantly goes to loot with half the people in the chat right now. Specifically Lupus. Specifically Lupus. <laughs> Rambala to grab the camp for the top lane. Stukov and Grammy and already grabbing it on the left-hand side. Bandit is currently having some puppy dreams and I can hear him. Wow, actually, hold on. That's really, really quick. Sulfurus hunger is being finished out. Holy crap. Two minutes, 20-something seconds. Oh, Bandit. Sorry. Anyways. <laughs> they all happened really fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Ludus? We call him Ludus? <laughs> I mean, honestly, like, half the time I have to permit, like, I would say 90% of what Lupus actually writes in my channel, I have to uh, let auto mod like, through for him because he's just constantly triggering auto mod every single every single post in this channel just lupus always triggers auto mod I, it, I, don't, I don't know how people deal with it he's just so so lewd gonna have the shaman camp actually win out in the top lane I wanted to check that out really quickly so this is gonna be in favor for the side of wild heart omega if they're able to delay this out it's a big benefit for them but the, excuse me but the overall objective phase seems to be going pretty neck and neck actually way faster for the side of baby makers as that mech explosion is going to yield them quite a few of those skeletal defenders only nine more are needed maybe even less actually as we're seeing that's well actually subdue uh, subdue being finished up this is a game of questing talents being done extremely fast at least from the side of wild heart on this right hand side though, they will have to defend. The members of Baby Makers looking to push in with this Arcane Punisher. Good use of Molten Core, so Lupus will probably bait this over the wall. Molten Core will eat a lot of the damage, also supplying a lot of damage itself. 
all in all, this actually forces the rotation into the bottom lane from Baby Makers. I actually really like the call coming out from Baby Makers and also the play from Wild Horde and Mega. Both teams kind of respecting each other in a sense, or at least ooh, 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 paper tanks, you are getting a little too low for me right there. But the big thing that I want to note is just like respecting the fact that the defense from Wild Heart is too strong. Instead of trying to force your face into the gate and try and make a play on the side of Baby Makers, they just end up backing off and trying to get a little bit of siege pressure through the bottom lane. Unfortunately, Apparition's able to nullify the siege setup with a big burst onto that Greymane, who is the anchor for a lot of that siege. Valmar might get caught out here, pops the blast wave on themselves, doubles back to avoid the impale or the dive from a new Brack shield glare might have just saved Valimar from Lupus. I will say this, there are some shield glares out there that that's all you need. That 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 mitigation of auto attack damage is all you need in those moments sometimes. This is a lot of damage, though, being dumped onto the Anubrak, who does burrow charge away and is able to get away with just a sliver of health. Going to spread that healing pathogen around from Stukov as the Ragnaros goes back into the top lane. It's a fat subdue, indeed. Like, seriously, like, that was an insane subdue. I, 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 it's rare when it's done that early into a game. And the level of value you have from it right now, I, I think that's, that's re that's, a, this is a really big buff for the side of Wildheart. Because you don't need to hit two heroes to proc that 80% slow. It's just always, it's always there. And that, that sustained setup chase for a potential Chromie or a Cassia, the right there, look at that Fen dive into Paper Tanks, who's taking so much, is able to get away from the last little bit of damage of Chromie. It can be a little bit of a shifting meteor cast by Valimar. Gonna put some damage onto the uh, Grey Main, but no kills to be had so far in this, I guess, early to mid game. Let's actually cycle through the other numbers as this phase shift will connect onto Chromie just in time. Ball Lightning does bounce from player to player, but it's not going to yield a kill. I was like, wait, I was about to be like, Paper Tanks, you you going to be able to disengage from this button? Ragnaros is mol uh, Molten Sulfur Smash, dear lord. Is going to be Sulfur Smash, so looking to maybe set up with that. If someone if someone gets hit by a Subdue, that could be the one to punch for a kill. I'm specifically looking at Paper Tanks. This gray main is just a little... Uh, it, it, they're slowly getting their health back, but it's just making me more and more nervous for said gray main player. Next Punisher's bottom lane just getting announced here, and it is going to be Mortar. We do see all of our heroics. The only one that's on cooldown is going to be the Ball Lightning from Cassia. Alarak trying to build out that level 1 questing talent. Finish out those, those stacks immediately so they can get their 10% back. I'm just looking at Valimar and watching the rotation happen here. Going to pop the Blast Wave on themselves. Able to get a... Uh, ooh, whoa! That's going to be a Sulfur Smash onto the Ragnaros. A lot of damage goes into Lupus, who's able to back off. Greymane dives in with that Cursed Bullet, trying to find the Chunking. Ball Lightning goes out, finds the kill onto Greymane. A double kill so far for the side of Wild Heart Omega as the Polymorph comes through. Fen's going to connect from Brown Baller. Wonderful Telekinesis out from Deadwish, which will almost get the kill onto Frosty. But this will be the disengage from Wildheart, not losing one themselves, finding two kills, putting themselves further up in experience, and this will be a Mortar Punisher, I would assume, in their favor. Four seconds on the Grey Main, and the map position, I would assume this goes over to Wildheart. I also didn't realize, yeah, I didn't catch that, Nick. Um, applied Force at level 7, 10% more reduced onto the Alarak. I'm actually curious. Yeah, he's just got he's just got reduction. He doesn't have any sort of uh, sadism gain. It's a little unfortunate, but we'll check onto that sadism breakdown a little bit further on. As we said beforehand, Alarak just working on that last quest to be able to get that 10% back, trying to hit three enemy heroes with that extended lightning. Not extended lightning. Lightning surge. Extended lightning's the level one talent. All right, Mortar Punisher, gonna get a lot of value for Wildheart. I'm just curious, do they go for Keep Front Gate? Punisher's still pretty healthy. Siege value's strong for Wildheart. I think, yeah, they can actually step into this and go for bottom lane Keep Front Gate. Um, get a little bit of soft pressure onto that back off. Brightwing is in top lane. Does Frosty have the face shift or did they use it? Yeah, I think they used it to actually jump up into that top lane, right? It's like 45 second cooldown, 50, yeah, okay. With a minion waiver so dying in top lane and that hyper shift value at level one, I would assume that, yeah, it's in that right spot right there. As Blessed Shield was actually ripped onto the D.Va mech, Lupus going for the body block, time temporal loop, phase shift. 
phase shift. Uh, excuse me, the Fen came in from the Cassia. There was just so much damage as Cassia actually goes down. That's gonna be a little bit of a sadism for that Alarak finally. And Lupus is able to disengage, maybe. Dead was trying to still just get those stacks. They do have the level uh, seven, which is going to be an uncapped quest. So they could sit there and still build this up. Ext ex ex extended damage. Uh, scaling your damage is, is always just gonna be, it's gonna have worth to it, obviously. Unless it's crash lighting, I guess, or convection. So, you know, maybe that statement isn't so true. Valimar gets pulled, that's a Sulfur Smash into the face of the Alarak, and that Sadism gained is now Sadism lost. They actually went into the uh, Pure Malice as well, trying to gain Sadism from friendly members dying, but they're the ones who go down, and I don't believe you can give yourself Sadism in that right. Frozen Punisher for top lane, rotation up from the side of Wildheart Omega, doing a really good job of controlling the map, rotating, and putting the macro pressure into the enemy side. I feel like D.Va has to be banned on this map. It's so hard to lose the objective with a D.Va on the team. Uh, I don't think you're wrong. I don't think you're wrong at all. I think Sonya is very strong in that right as well. Uh, her ability to self-sustain and clear is really, really good. Whoa, win back. Thank you for the Twitch Prime. Um, Terilyn, wow, thank you for the Twitch Prime as well. I will resend your alerts when we get out of game. My apologies. I didn't catch those. Holy crap, thank you so much for the support. Thank you, thank you, thank you, my friends. Thanks for coming through with the, uh, with the Twitch Prime. Thanks for using your Bezos money on me. Thanks for ripping, ripping dollars out of Bezos' pocket and putting them into bandits. That's what you're doing. You're taking money from one bald guy and giving it to another bald guy. Except he's gonna use that money to buy dog food because that's the priority and feed bandit over myself, which is typically the case. Anyways, thank you again for the support, my friends. Very much appreciated. All right, uh, top lane fort is going to take a little bit of siege from the fallen shaman. Meanwhile, this is going to be wild heart rotating for maybe some camps to be pressed in through mid and bottom. Ragnaros gets another clear down here. Already finished out that level one questing talent. Did go into resilient flame at level seven as well. It's actually really, that's actually a really good talent for the amount. How, what's the cooldown on that? 15 seconds? Because you have, you have uh, stuns from Anubrax, stuns from D.Va, if I'm not mistaken, right? Does she have the rushdown? Yeah. Or wait, is is that? Am I crazy? Does, does rushdown not do a little stun? I, I guess I'm crazy. All right. I thought there was like I thought there was a talent that gives you a little bit of I thought that talent gave you a little stun off of the uh, first hero you hit. But 16 talents here still grabbed by the side of uh, Wildheart first. Ragnaros is going to be left onto the point while their rotation comes down into the mid to mitigate any sort of this uh, free siege that would be available to the side of Baby Makers. Brown Bala looking to maybe poke in with this Cassia, but does not step in. Better bald guy by far. Ah, oh, thank you. Level seven as the stun. Okay. Oh, okay, thank you. I literally didn't read the last sentence. Booster stun for 0.5 seconds. Thank you. Thank you, chat. Thank you. What would I do without you? Valimar finishes out the objective. We are going to be seeing Lupus getting... Ooh, nice iron skin timing on that from Lupus with the fanaticism value. That's why you're seeing that, that increased movement speed. You move at 140%, which is basically 10% faster than mount speed. Or if you're looking at like a Dahaka, that'd be enhanced agility finished out at level one value for a Dahaka. So really cool. Uh, I personally love fanaticism at level seven. I think, or excuse me, level 16. I think it's such a, it's such a strong talent for a Joanna player, but either way, Punisher pushing in through top lane. Is armor trigger on silence too? Um, I don't think so. St uh, it, when Ragnaros is stunned. So I would, I would assume it's just off of whatever a stun condition is. I would assume silence is not a stun condition. If you're thinking of like virulent reaction, this is just gonna be a root as well. I was trying to maybe think about that, but either way, ooh, wow, a Rag not Ragnaros. The uh, Ragnaros did pop the Sulfurious Smash, but there is going to be that kill onto Anubrak. The Punisher does go down through top lane, and uh, Wild Heart Omega is going to be able to grab themselves the top lane keep. Not a bad play. 
looking like they will also grab themselves a bruiser camp. Let's go ahead and cycle through those other numbers once again, get an idea of what those look like because we have not had a chance to look at them in the later portion of this Infernal Shrines game. One camp up and available, looking just at the camp timers in general across the map. So there's this one, this bruiser camp's very, very close to coming off of cooldown. So is the siege camp. But Ragnaros and friends will continue just to soak out the lanes and get themselves closer and closer to 20 talent tier. My favorite inkling main. We got some, uh, we got some, some smash, some smash hate in here or something like that. <laughs> Wildheart just kind of setting up in the bushes a little bit, grabbing camps mostly, but an invade will happen onto the right hand side of the map. Frosty and friends don't see this. They don't know where the enemy team is. Actually, no, Chromie is going to be able to scout things out with Time Walker's Pursuit from level one. And now the invade, I think, is on. Unfortunately, the invade doesn't happen quick enough, but the temporal loop goes out onto this Anubrak who burrow charges just in time with the unstoppable value or status effect from. Uh, d -d 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 -d. is it always? Are you always unstoppable when you burrow charge? I think you are actually. I thought it was a talent for a hot second. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure you actually. I didn't think about that. Anyways, Valimar's gonna throw out the Sulfur Smash, and Brightwing tries to heal Frosty when doing their best. Mecha explosion happens on the left hand side of our screen. Uh, I stopped playing Hots a while ago to play Smash, and I main Inkling. Oh, nice! Catapults are here on the core on the left hand side. I'm just curious, really quickly. Five thirty-two when it comes to damage on those. Just looking at Wildheart, and they're just kind of waiting for Ragnaros. They're like, "All right, I mean, the map's kind of in our favor. We don't need to step too far forward. So let's just not show and make the enemy team a little nervous." Unstoppable baseline. Thank you. Thank you. I honestly wasn't sure. I was like, wait a minute, is it baseline? I couldn't remember. Shield Glare is going to come in, and they know that the enemy team's already disengaging from this. 20 talent tiers slowly trickling in for the side of Wildheart, and I think they're going to be able to grab it just as the Ragnaros comes up or just before this objective phase. Waves are actually not too far pushed up, so I think, yeah, mid's pretty much the real, real way for them to find it without stepping too far forward in the lanes on the side of Wildheart. Look at that, look at that Joanna siege damage. <laughs> it's actually fairly high, it's actually fairly high. It's actually rivaling the Chromies, almost over the Cassias as well. But with that, Lupus is actually gonna push their friendly team into 20 talent here, and then we can go ahead and show that. Ooh, heroic difficulty for the Ragnaros, okay. Um, it's reduced by 50 seconds. I believe it's a two minute cooldown for, for Molten Core, so that's probably going to be, what, 70 seconds at that point? And my caster masters me right. Hey Rob, good to see you, bud. No Diablo 2 resurrected for you. Uh I don't know when I went to Blizzard. I I have I uh I'm also today is the specific content creator day. The ones who have like legit deals with Blizzard or basically have a lot of viewers and Blizzard actually wants to give them free stuff. Friday's the day when people are supposed to get an email or something about it. So I I doubt that I'll get it. I, I push the button, but I doubt I, I'll be in the pool. If we do have it, it's on Friday, but we're going to be casting all day tomorrow. So if anything, maybe we'll finish up the day with that. Dear Lord, the Sulfur Smash is going to be able to snipe. Alarak does finish out their level one questing talent. They're at 113 sadism right now. Actually going to get a little value from that pure malice. The Ragnaros is going to pop the Molten Core for it from the bottom lane on that keep. And the core itself on the set of Baby Makers is falling. Can the members of Wild Heart end this game? Great Counter-Strike from Deadwish mitigating the big swing from the Ragnaros. As Greymane will be picked off. Face Shift comes in onto Apparition just in time as the core is falling rapidly on the side of Baby Makers. Diva Mech Explosion buys a little bit of time. 30% remains on this core as the Shield Glare comes out. Massive shove to try and disengage from the Stukov as we have 20% falling more rapidly 
And this is looking like it's going to be game number one in our first best of three of the day. Going to be going over to the side of Wild Heart Omega. GG, well played. Win back. Thank you for the five months. Terralyn, thank you for the tier, or excuse me, thank you for the Twitch Prime. Thank you for the support, my friend. Looking at builds on Hot Dogs, surprised to see that Laws of Hope build will sometimes take fanaticism. Yeah, I mean, I've taken, um... Are you talking, um, Sins Exposed at level 4? Is that what you're talking about? I like, like, honest to god, I, I am a hold your ground main, I always go hold your ground, but, um, Eternal Retaliation and Sins Exposed, it's a toss-up, honestly. There are days and there's team fights where, I, or there's, there's, there's maps, I guess I could say is better, where I'm just like, I feel like if I go in, uh, Sins Exposed, my team will find kills because I can get that shield glare for the increased damage. Eternal Retaliation at level 4 is so strong as well for a map like this that's rotation heavy based. This right here, this build that we're seeing, this is pretty much the standard that I would go into. You go into Hold Your Ground, Eternal Retaliation, Subdue, Bless Shield, Roar, Fanaticism, and Radiating Faith at level 20. If you're getting picked too much because you're mispositioned, as a main tank, I highly recommend taking Indestructible, gives you that second health bar, and maybe your Chromie, Ragnaros, Cassia, Brightwing can turn things around as you live for just a little bit longer. I even like more speed at level 4 depending on the comp. That could be true, Taco. Oh, by the way, Taco, I'm gonna do your uh, replay from the 5th. Let your team know. You guys are next. It's the uh, region Rebels versus... Uh, I have it right here. Souls in slow-mo. Yeah, my brain was thinking of a completely different name that was not correct at all. All right, let's go ahead and uh, bring it on back to Bandit and I. And we can get into our next game. Fanaticism loses a lot without hold your ground. Yeah, I could agree. I could agree. Turn retaliation on Tomb and Infernal, sins on others. I would agree with you on, uh, I would agree with you, Lupus. Like, I'll take sins exposed on, like, Hatamura. Uh, go get a drink. What do you want me to go drink? It's, it's two third. it's 2.42. We got, we got, we got to cast games all day. Oh, that was your speed. Okay, okay. Sorry, I didn't, I didn't even see that. Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, since Mongoose is sick, he can't do it today. I didn't even know he was going to do it. Yeah, uh, Regen Rebel versus Souls and Slow-Mo. That will be our next best of three that we're going to cast. And then after that, we're going to go ahead and pull chat and you all can decide what we're going to cast. But I wanted to have a couple games set up for all of us so we could kind of just like chill. We have it all set and ready to go. Um, just going to go ahead and get everything for it this next game. Orange Julius. I don't have any orange juice, unfortunately. I can't drink it. It's 5 p.m. somewhere. All right, look, <laughs> it's too it's too early for a cocktail. I'll be I'll be asleep by the time we get to the ghillie shark game later. Harkin, if you want, I can get it later or I can give you back the points and I can you can redeem it at another time. It's just a little too early. It's a little too early. <laughs> Convection level four speed boost. Yeah, uh, I feel like sins is good on tomb, though, with wave clear. That's true. That could be true. Um, I wanted to do... Yes, this is what I wanted to do. Cool. Easy enough. It's almost 6 p.m. here. I mean, in Europe, it's almost tomorrow. You get it whenever you're ready. All right, I appreciate that, Harkin. Thank you. 
Orange Julius, best Julius. I just, I can't drink it though. My stomach doesn't handle it. Eternal is technically faster wave clear as long as you hit the whole wave. Math and stuff, yeah. But I feel like Eternal Retaliation, I will say this, I feel like with Eternal Retaliation, I can actually burn through a mana bar of Joanna. Like, really, really quickly. Sorry, my posture. Whoops. Uh, like, I feel like I can really, really just... I can I can starve myself as a Joanna player. I, I just, I feel like, I feel like that's been the case in the past. Oh, this is a game. Oh, this is gonna be a game. Okay. Oh, hold on one second. So it's time to drink some. Uh, look, look, look. I'm trying to be slightly better about drinking and all that stuff. Because the CDR? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I feel like you can spam it too much. I had to coax my dog back in here. It does give mana back, doesn't it? I, it does, but I, honest to God, Lupus, I feel like I can just burn through it. Maybe that's because I'm just cycling too many abilities too quickly. Uh, you and Tatsuki have a tendency to use E a lot when you don't really need to. That is really true. That is really true. That is very true. Uh, better usually means drunk or just saying. Either way, let's go ahead and get into a game, everybody. Uh, we are here on Towers of Doom. Let's go ahead and get on into it. On the left-hand side, we have the members of uh, Wild Heart Omega up one in this best of three series, trying to close it out in a 2-0 fashion here on Towers of Doom. Lupus on the Joanna. Apparition will be on the Chromie. Frosty Win on the Brightwing. Brown Bala on the Cassia. And uh, realistically, the only thing different with Wild Heart's draft, we have Valimar on the Olaf, Balog, and Eric. On the right-hand side, we have the members of Baby Makers, who actually drafted different heroes slightly. Freckle Bob's gonna be on the Stukov, Deadwish is gonna be on the Maiav, Paper Tank's on that Greymane, Marbuckle on the Hogger, and ETC played by Deshabels. I think that's how you say that. Checking out the level ones and checking out our first engagement. Let's see what is gonna happen. You had a bunch of minions that cuts the mana in half? Okay. The, the biggest, the biggest, like, the biggest, um, uh, I guess you could say trepidation. It's probably not the right term or word for it. Uh, is I we are casting a live game at some point, and while we cast like replays, like I do take them seriously and everything. But we do we do kind of like chat a little bit more, and we can meme here and there. But like I don't know what it is, but like when I cast a live game, I want to be all super serious and stuff. I'm sure the teams don't give a shit if I had a cocktail when we cast. Maybe I'll ask the teams. Who knows. Anyways, let's continue uh, into these game, into this game right here as we do have uh, the Vikings going into the explosive attacks at level one. Gonna be that quote unquote Balog build. And I would assume that the side of Wild Heart Omega is going to run a two one Vikings, meaning two, two Vikings top, one Viking mid. And they'll put their core four through bottom lane because this bottom Composition actually works really well. It sieges, it pokes, it has disengage potential as well. Um, to keep in mind, Time Walker's Pursuit also has the activation, the arming time. It, inc it increases that speed of the uh, activation for the time traps going on the ground, or the arming time as in the time you place them on the ground to when you can use them. Sorry, verbiage. Cassia goes down. And the, the nice thing that I want to mention with that is you also have the uh, time troubles, which has the armor reduction into enemy heroes and armor buff for friendly side. Unfortunately, that's not going to be quick enough, and the invade on the camp will happen here, and it will be a pickup for the side of Baby Makers, who finds the second camp on the right. A lot of good push potential coming out from our red team. I'm usually having a drink while casting. Man, I, maybe, maybe I'm just, maybe I'm just overthinking it, chat. Maybe I'm just overthinking it. Maybe it don't matter. Sorry, I'm taking off my sweater really quickly, and I'm trying to cast still at the same time. Alrighty, there we go. It's getting a little warmer in the house because uh, we're slightly entering into summer up here on the mountain. And by that, I mean it's getting into like the 60s every day. Like, whoo, still drops to about 30 at night. Um, if you're in Europe, that's basically, it's what, it gets to like zero every single night and it gets to like, uh, it gets to like 15 Celsius maybe in the day. That's, that's a little too hot. Probably more like 12 Celsius during the day for our European friends. 
There's some there's some math tricks with that, but yeah. Basically, it's like a yeah, it's, I'd say it's like 12, 14 Celsius in the, in the day and at like zero at night. Uh, Rob Christie, thank you so much for the tier one for 23 months. I will resend your alert when we get out of game. Holy crap. Thank you for the support, my friend. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nothing like a handful of cocktails to lubricate the tongue. I don't know about that one there. Almost two years. Hell yes. Thank you so much. Hey, Terrellyn, thanks again for the uh, for the sub earlier. Much appreciated, my friend. Wow, my app is getting fan and I have resets after resets. The channel on the left-hand side gets picked up by the Viking. Deadwish gets the healing pathogen from Frecklebob just in time. The Vikings forcing hoggers so far. Or no, he might have just been hog wilding around a little bit right there. But this is looking like the... Okay, so it's even on shots. I, I actually missed this altar phase. I wasn't sure who got that one. But right now... Right now, baby makers are going to be the ones who are able to grab the vast majority of the shots, and Wildheart Omega going to be down to 32 to 6, 36 health. Europe is quite vague. Yeah, it's a uh, it's it's a very weird country. <laughs> just you know the country of Europe. It's just so weird. I don't like I, I say things and I'm just like, all right, I don't know how I'm a caster, honest to God. Another camp invade out from the side of Baby Makers. Wildheart not able to get here in time. Actually, no, Lupus is on the point, but does end up backing off. Lupus literally stepped in, goes, cool, I got my subdue sub five minutes into the game. I'm out of here. Pops the iron skin is able to disengage. I always thought Europe was pretty direct. It's the final countdown. <laughs> This is actually really good. <laughs> that was actually really good. That got me good. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, favorite Tanks is going to grab this cam. Freckle Bob was kind of anchoring in the bush a little bit for the friendly member. We're nearing the 10 talents here, so let's go ahead and cycle through the other numbers once again, get an idea of what those look like, as this is going to be another altar phase, bottom of the map, and gonna be a single altar phase. So, realistically, for the side of Wildheart, their best bet is to actually not grab this and just delay it out for as long as possible so that, so that Valimar is able to soak up and, one, close the experience gap from the early kill, but also start to buff out that experience due to the fact that they have the, uh, the Vikings just kind of pushing these lanes and trying to match and mitigate some of the heroic mercenary value already coming in. Just looking at the experience break breakdown between both teams. Whoa! Uh, just a car. Thank you so much for gifting a sub to Lupus. Holy crap. Or just a car? Just a car, I think? I'm sorry for murdering your name. Thank you so much for the sub, for the gifted sub. Holy crap. Lupus, enjoy all of your awesome new emotes that you have. Double kill for the side of Wild Heart Omega as the camp, excuse me, the objective will still be channeled by the side of Baby Makers. Wild Heart, even with these Vikings, falling behind a little bit, at least in core health, but not in experience. We were talking about this beforehand. Those kills also push them into that 10 talents here, but also you have the Vikings still soaking. Eric almost finds the kill into Marbuckle. Valmar really pressing up with those Vikings. Meanwhile, you still have... Uh, I was going to say, Balog in top lane soaking. Oh, he's going to be able to catch some of these, uh, some of this soak right now. He's actually going to be threatening Marbuckle still as uh, they're going to force their way onto two of those regeneration globes. Want to just quickly look through some of the questing talents as well. 27 stacks on the Thunderstruck from the Cassia. Journeyman's cooking for the Hoggers at 12 out of the 75. And the Subdue, as I mentioned, was already finished out. Maya finds the pick in mid lane, but there's already an Olaf to catch the soak and make sure that there's none really lost uh, from that Eric death. About a half a level lead, I would say, for the side of uh, Wildheart. It's gonna be, it's gonna be a game of aggression, mostly I think from Baby Makers. I think they have to play consistently aggressive to shut down the Viking value, and also late game kills are gonna be a great way to mitigate and match the experience out from these Vikings. Baby Makers need to find a kill or two, so we're gonna see a lot of aggressive invades as we have been so far. First bolt's a very low cooldown, I believe about 25 seconds onto that bad boy. 30 seconds actually, excuse me, as uh, pretty much will be thrown out any time I think Lupus shows their face and it's off of cooldown. We also do have Mosh Pit for the ETC. Uh, there are some interrupt options, but hey, if you mosh all if you mosh all four enemy members, who's gonna interrupt you? A Viking? Probably not. 
Hey Nas, what's going on? <laughs> Greece is zero. Greece is zero degrees Celsius. Is it really? So uh, that's that's a uh, that's that's a cold. That's that's some cold nights. Is it? Wait, thirty-two. Is it? Sorry, is it? Is it zero during the day or at night? Because we have we have roughly thirty degree Fahrenheit temperature swings every single day. Um, like it'll be sixty degrees Fahrenheit about. Uh, during the day as the high and then the lows are about 30 degrees Fahrenheit So that's why I was saying it's like we're kind of doing like zero in like 12 or 14 Celsius uh, in comparison to you guys Warden's cage out from dead wish mosh pit comes out from the ETC. That's a lot That was a lot for a bright wing kill in the end the ETC ends up going down Vikings will play it again to bring them back in dead wish is gonna be time stop with the armor reduction as well Brown baller looking to jump in but the Vikings are gonna be the first one to go in Unfortunately, Eric is gonna be picked off He's tried to be swift and brave mostly was just brave as he does go down This altar phase is still happening as the gray main does get picked off by the chromie damage Lupus looking to go for the channels apparition and brown baller might be zoning no lupus goes for the for the zone and this will be Four shots into the enemy core, equalizing our core health. 28 to 28, Vikings respawning slowly but surely, and they'll get back into lane to push things out. How's the casting going this lovely evening? Uh, it is going pretty well. We are in our first best of three of the evening. Uh, after this best of three, we're going to get into Region Rebel uh, versus... Uh, Souls something? I'm very sorry. Oh, Kyle Ferguson. Holy crap. Thank you for the raid. Thank you, Kyle, for bringing all your friends over here. We are currently casting a bunch of games. A bunch of games. Holy crap. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kyle, for the raid. So much good action. I can't imagine haunts on mobile. Uh, me neither. Are you saying like watching on Twitch? Like on mobile? That's not too bad. Obviously on a computer screen, it's it's a lot more convenient, but I don't mind. I actually, back back in the HTC days when I worked in an office, um, I would literally sit with like, I would have, um, I would open up Twitch and I, you could set it so it's audio only. So I would just listen to the HTC um, and I would do the same thing when I was like driving back home. And then and then I'd walk Bandit when I got home and I'd just watch HTC on my phone and then sit in my house and that's all I'd do all night. Kyle Ferguson, thank you again. For the uh, for the raid, uh, yes, and it's Regen Rebel versus Souls and Slow Mo. That'll be the next best of three we get into. Later on today, we've got uh, Phoenix Rising Ruby versus Gilly Shark. So that's going to be a live best of three, and I do believe that has a little bit of playoff um, value. I guess you could say to it, if the if the Gilly Sharks upset, they could find themselves potentially in the playoffs. I think there's some other stuff that has to happen, but there's some potential upset value going into that. We'll have to see. Either way, we're doing a crap load of NGS games today, so I hope you all are, are uh, excited. We got a lot of good action for you all. So thanks for being here, and thank you once again, Kyle, for the raid. Very much appreciated, my friend. I hope you had a good stream. I hope your Storm League games, I'm assuming, were very, very good. Four more shots raining out in favor for the side of Wildheart into the core of Baby makers, and these baby makers, they're slowly but surely losing health. It was only one alter face, so it's not the biggest deal right now. It's 28 to 23 in core health. It's anyone's game. I mean, if anyone watched the Time to Shine versus Legendary game that we casted, it was the last game in the Scrim series we casted uh, last night. That game is a great example of how Towers of Doom is anyone's game. Legendary controlled that game for so long, and Time to Shine found one kind of window and just kept, ex not exploiting, but just found a window and just held on to that slight lead they found. Such a good game, such a good game. I highly recommend you go check it out. I know I spoiled a little bit of it, but still, regardless, it's it's a wonderful watch. Maybe I'll throw that one on YouTube. I think that one's a good YouTube video. Regardless, 16 to 15 in our levels. Mayev considering the invade with the Spirit of Vengeance. Deadwish doesn't go in, and this will be Brown Brawla and friends grabbing the camp. ETC also, by the way, you can see that little speaker is on Encore, so cooldown reduction uh, onto their Heroic. And since it's Stage Dive, we know that it's going to be six seconds off a of Stage Dive. So if you hit two heroes, you're getting basically a literal tenth of your Heroic off a of cooldown. Bless Shield comes out from Lupus Ball Lightning, bounces to two, and that'll be the double kill for the side of Wild Heart East, or Wild Heart Esports, Wild Heart Omega. Marbuckle looking to put some pressure just onto this Baylog through top, but here's the thing, it's a triple alter phase, Vikings are up. We actually could see all three capped by the side of Wildheart Omega. 
Season 9, my first season casting, I casted an anti-clan association game, I think it was versus Quarantine. Towers of Doom was 1-to-1 one -one core health. Anti-clan association, Garrosh threw the sapper over the dead zone into the team fight to win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the sapper if thrown into the into the death zone by Garrosh is such a cool interaction because for anyone that doesn't know, the level 7 talent into the fray, you can target friendly units. So you can actually throw an enemy, you can throw a friendly minion. And if you pick up the sappers, they're technically a friendly minion. So minion. So if you target the sapper and you toss them into the dead zone, there's no stopping. There's literally nothing you can do, I believe, to stop that. Maybe a Stukov lurking arm if you can if you can predict exactly where it's gonna land, but I don't think that I don't think it works either way. I know Stukov like lurking arm actually stops them from charging, but right now they don't charge. They just have to tiptoe their way into that death zone, as we were saying in chat. There's going to be one sapper going over the wall. The other one will be cleared out. So only one sapper goes over in the end, but this is a 9 to 25 core health in favor for Wildheart Omega. And Wildheart holding this bottom lane really well. Let's actually go ahead and cycle through the other numbers once again, get you an idea of what those look like, because we have not had a chance to look at them in the later portion of our game, as well as since the wonderful Kyle Ferguson raid. Since a few members of Wildheart are showing through the mid lane rotation, bottom lane fort goes down. But with that, it means that Wildheart is like, all right, cool. We know that you're going to quickly grab the fort. We can try and burn through boss. Big thing here is try and burn through boss. That's the big factor in all of that. Today I learned that Stukov counters sappers, not completely. So Stukov counters when the sappers charge. So if they were walking through bottom lane and let's say they, they see the structure and they, they do that kind of like um, Metal Gear Solid where they kind of alert themselves and they go to charge, if you lurking arm right as they're charging, it actually uh, stops that charge and uh, they will start to walk again. So they can walk out of, I believe that root, or that, not the root, but the um, Lurking arm. So it's just one of those things. Once they exit the lurking arm, that silence ends and they can then charge again. It's a really cool interaction. There's a lot of little interactions uh, like that in Heroes of Storm. Much like there's also a lot of little visuals. You can actually see the radial around the towers. You can actually see one, two, three, yellow. That signifies top, middle, bottom lane in which Bell Tower is controlled. Big blush shield, big damage, and that's going to be a double kill for the side of Wildheart as Deadwish jumps into the back lane. Greymane goes down as well. Deadwish trying to make the big play here with the Warden's Cage, and unfortunately, Brown Bala can't decide if they want to mount or disengage. Freckle Bob going for the channel, sprays and walks away. This is looking like it is going to be Wildheart getting the double cap and they are going to go ahead and take our first best of three series today in a 2-0 fashion. GG, well played. Would a gust stop Garish throw? Uh, yeah, I think it would actually. All right, let me push the right buttons. Hey, Stark. Chat's asking me to drink during your game. <laughs> All right, let's see. I have I have something I wanted to test. Let's see if this works. Apparently, it doesn't work. Okay, there's a pause button for Streamlabs through uh, through Stream Deck, and it doesn't do shit. I thought I thought I could like pause the alerts and then push the unpause, and it just like the f alerts flood out, but no. Either way, Rob Christie, thank you again for the tier one for 23 months. Thank you for almost two years of support. I am doing very well. Thank you so much, my friend. Thank you for the support. Thank you for the tier one. I don't know why uh, the alerts are busted because this this should technically be a sub alert or a sub gift alert. I don't know what's happening. Uh, Kyle Ferguson, thank you again for the raid. Very much appreciated. And uh, Xander Roots, thank you for the follow during the game. Uh, the name of the player you're probably going to have trouble saying is Vel E. Ravia. E. That sounds like a team, that sounds like a name that I don't want to cast. Maybe I should find a different game. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Sure, drink away. <laughs> what about towers? Wait, what about towers? Uh, no, I was just saying that the, the Stukov interaction thing. Did you decide to do this replay because our game uh, is Tuesday? Uh, oh, no, no. I, honestly, I was just literally looking for games that were on cast. My, my big thing is, like, I want to try and cast a lot of different games. So I was literally just, like, looking through team names that I was like, what's a team name I know I have not cast? Oh, this one. All right. So I'm going to grab it. So since you told me literally yesterday, you're, you're, you're regen rebel. I was like, I was literally just looking through empty games, not empty games, uncasted games. And I saw the team name and I'm like, well, 
There you go. That's an easy choice. <laughs>